Hi, my name is Kate Tipping um, and I'm going to talk to you today about the pathophysiology of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Okay, I'm going to um, ask you some simple questions, MCQs, to find out what you already know. I'm going to talk about what is COPD, the symptoms, pathophysiology, clinical examination, so OSCE tips, and then I'm going to finish with some multiple choice questions at the end. Okay, so what do you already know? Question one, what is the most common cause of COPD? Is it smoking, genetics, alcohol, or anemia? Um, think about the symptoms of COPD and how it relates to the cause. So the most common cause of COPD is smoking. In COPD, what deficiency results in the loss of protection against proteases? Is it KRAS? Is it anti-TTG antibody? Is it alpha-1 antitrypsin or P53? Now, some of these are tumour suppressors. Um, so obviously, make sure you know your, your tumour suppressors. Um, the answer is alpha-1 antitrypsin. Question three, what would be common symptoms for a COPD patient? Stridor, headaches and chest pain. Pleural rub, trigeminal pain and cough with no sputum. Cough with pink sputum, back pain and swelling in legs. Or wheeze, breathlessness and cough with sputum. Um, Obviously, some of these symptoms um, could be related to COPD individually, but what is the most likely combination? And it's wheeze, breathlessness, and a cough with sputum. Okay, what is COPD? COPD is a chronic obstructive airway disease that is characterized by its irreversibility. Um, or it's not, uh, sometimes the definition is... Um, Progressive airflow obstruction that is not fully reversible and does not change markedly over several months. It's an umbrella term, so it includes chronic bronchitis and emphysema. You can have um, either chronic bronchitis, sorry, chronic bronchitis or emphysema. People often have a mixture of both diseases. So chronic bronchitis is a uh, classified as a cough with sputum for at least three months in two consecutive years. Emphysema is permanently dilated airway distal to the terminal bronchioles with alveolar destruction and bullet formation. So it's associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, which we'll talk about in a bit more detail, and increased elastase activity. Now, COPD is a very um, common um, condition. And it's also one that um, basically it's accountable for 5% of all deaths in the UK each year. Um, and it's responsible, exacerbations of COPD are responsible for 10% of all admissions to hospitals in the UK. So you can see it's a very important condition um, and it's one that does cost the NHS quite a lot of money. Um, Symptoms, it's a chronic cough with sputum. The sputum is usually clear or grey, although in exacerbated COPD it can turn yellow or green. So remember to have a look at your um, Anofsky tip is to look at uh, the bedside. Is there any sputum pots? Is the sputum in it? And if you're on placement and um, you, know, you really want to, you could go and have a look at sputum pots and see if there's any clear or grey sputum. Um, Shortness of breath, laboured breathing, so uh, dyspnea and chest tightness, wheeze, frequent chest infections. Now breathing out takes longer than breathing in, so they do that pursing of the lips um, and basically they do that to maintain a positive end expired pressure. Now they may have central cyanosis, check in the OSCEs, check for edema in the legs and ankles. Um, Although COPD primarily affects the lungs, um, because of all the um, inflammatory hormones, cytokines, uh, interferons, TNF, etc., you can get weight loss, osteoporosis, depression, general fatigue. Uh, with COPD, 
symptoms gradually get worse over time and daily activities become harder and harder. Um, although treatment, medication, um, smoking cessation and that can help slow the progression. Um, now, I've put this in for you. Um, sometimes, especially in an older patient, uh, you, you're you looking to distinguish COPD from asthma. And this is a really useful um, table that can just give you, you can read through in your own time, that can just give you some hints and tips between diagnosing um, or distinguishing uh, COPD from asthma. You might have those on your list of differentials. Um, and as I said, just have a read through this in your own time. And, and uh, there's, I've also done a separate asthma lecture um, on the website, which you can read through as well. So the pathophysiology of COPD, chronic bronchitis, as I said, there's, an, there's chronic bronchitis and emphysema. So first of all, chronic bronchitis is a chronic infection which results in the chronic infiltration of the respiratory submucosa by inflammatory cells. So this results in um, mucous gland hyperplasia and smooth muscle hypertrophy so that causes the bronchial lumen to narrow. Now with emphysema, alveolar walls are destroyed, resulting in bullae formation and the fusion of adjacent alveoli. So results in a decreased surface air for gas exchange and decreased elastic recoil with subsequent, subsequent air trapping. So you'll see like they might have a barrel chest, which I'll talk about in a, uh, later on. Um, so basically COPD as an umbrella term, it ultimately leads to the breakdown of alveolar attachments by elastase. So this leads to small airway collapse. It leads to inflammation and thickening of the lining of the airway tubules. Excess mucus production blocks the airways, so you'll see them coughing up quite a bit of sputum, and all in all, it compromises airflow. So this was a picture that was in one of our lectures. So you can see the normal lungs, and you can see on the left the alveolar air sacs, um, which look fine and, and healthy. And then on the right, you can see that they've um, they've lost the shape. So the walls of the alveoli have been destroyed and they've um, they've formed into like a larger alveoli. Um, bronchioles will lose the shape and they'll become clogged with mucus. So obviously the patients are trying to breathe with all this mucus, which is obviously increasingly difficult. Now smoking is the most common cause. Therefore, smoking cessation is the first line of treatment. So before in medicine, obviously, before we start trying to pump people full of drugs and, and sending them off for surgery, lifestyle intervention is almost always the first line. Obviously, unless you've got a really, really acutely ill patient, um, it's always best if you can try and have them improve their diet, their exercise, um, you know, to cut out alcohol, to stop smoking with help. And um, there's a lot of cessation programs. Um, so always try to think about what you can do to actually help your patient that's cost effective but is also um, that they can implement themselves and they can take control of, of their lifestyle. Um, COPD can be caused by exposure to secondhand smoke. Occupational exposure, so coal mining, which is obviously, they, these are a lot less common now but you'll find them in older patients. Coal mining, gold mining, cotton textile. Um, air pollution. Less than 1% of COPD is actually caused by genetics, so the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, uh, which results in the loss of protection against proteases. Now, you'll usually see this in patients who are younger than 35 years of age. Now, the alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, I've put this in for you to give you a bit more information. Um, it's a protease inhibitor of elastase, which is an enzyme. In alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, there's an imbalance between elastase, which um, destroys elastin, and this basically leads to a chronic uninhibited tissue breakdown. So elastase is basically going around and destroying all the elastin, nothing stopping it, um, and it's breaking. You know, it's basically breaking down all this tissue. Um, A1AT deficiency is inherited by autosomal co-dominant transmission, meaning affected individuals have inherited an abnormal allele from each parent. So, as I said before, 1% of all COPD patients actually have this 
um, alcohol and antitrypsin deficiency. But cigarette smoke actually um, decreases the activity as well. So we, we want to really encourage our patients not to be smoking and to be avoiding passive smoking. So if they're friends or family that smoke, they, you know, they need to avoid this. The clinical examination and history. Diagnosing is confirmed by spirometry, which I'll come into. Um, you want to do blood, so you want to do a full blood count. You want to do um, UNEs, you want to do white cell count, uh, ESR, CRP, alpha-1 antitrypsin levels. So don't worry too much about these at the moment because um, for our exams, I don't think they'll be going into too much detail about investigations. It's more about pathophysiology. So you'd want to do an ECG for core pulmonale, which is common in COPD. Um, basically, it's defined as um, right ventricular dilation with consequent fluid retention caused by any chronic lung disorder with pulmonary hypertension. So um, patients with advanced COPD may have consistent uh, signs consistent with core pulmonale. So um, you want to look for a raised JVP. Uh, tricuspid regurgitation, peripheral edema, uh, hepatomegaly. These are all things you can check for in your OSCEs. Sputum culture. So you want to send that off, if they, particularly if they, um, they're bringing up quite a lot of sputum. Chest x-ray shows lung hyperinflation. Um, so patients might be barrel-chested barrel due to the air trapping. So even though um, you know they're breathing in and out, the, this, there's still a lot of air left within the chest. Um, so you'll be able to see that on an x-ray. So if you Google um, COPD x-rays, you should find some useful ones to have a look through. So remember always in your history to ask about smoking and their uh, occupation because you'll find um, when you're speaking to patients with COPD, the majority did smoke or they were in an occupation where they were exposed to quite a lot of um, irritants um, such as coal dust or uh, they worked in a textile factory. Again, um, this is something that may come up in your um, OSCE and it's always useful to know that COPD, as is asthma, is an obstructive lung disease. So the FEV1, FEC ratio uh, will always be decreased. So it will always be less than 70% or less than 0.7, depending on how they've worded it. But just be aware there is an obstructive lung disease. And I've put that table in there for you to have a look through. Things to look out for, nutritional status, cachexia. Uh, we lost a family member to COPD at the beginning of last year. Um, and I remember going to see her um, on the ward. And one of the first things I noticed was, was um, how much weight she'd lost. Um, you'll see them doing the pear slip breathing and the use of accessory muscles. They'll lean forward and um, they'll basically, um, you'll see them like trying to suck the air in. Tracheal tug may be present. Google that on YouTube and it'll show you how to, um, well, it'll show you examples of tracheal tug and it'll also show you how to track that the trachea is uh, in place. Tar stains on the fingers, they're smoker, coal dust tattoos, they've worked in the mines, barrel chested, um, hyperinflation, so when you pop your fingers around the chest as well you'll see that the diameter is increased, uh, wheeze on auscultation, edema, so check their ankles for pit and edema, and as I said before, you'll recall pulmonale which is a complication, you'll see distended neck veins with a prominent JVP, um, visible A or V waves. Um, again, Geeky Medics has um, brilliant explanations on JVP. Okay, so quickly we're going to go through the questions about what is the common cause of COPD. And the answer is smoking. Okay, so please feel free to pause if you need a bit more time. Question two, what deficiency results in the loss of protection against proteases? And it is alpha-1 antitrypsin. And finally, what are the common symptoms? And it is wheeze, wheeze breathlessness and cough with sputum. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Um, and I hope you found that useful. Thank you.